Dire Team Ban. Hmm. Team Secrets turn to ban. Ten seconds remaining. <laughs> Dire Team Ban. Ten seconds remaining. Five seconds remaining. Team Secrets turn to ban. Ten seconds remaining. Five seconds remaining. Reserve time. Dire team pick. Ten seconds remaining. Treant protector. Enigma. Crystal maiden. Dire team pick. All right, here we are. Game one between Team Empire and Team Secret. This is a best of three epicenter EU and CIS region remaining. qualifiers. And we get right on into this draft between these two teams. Five seconds we see remaining. Team Empire, they've banned out the Ricky as well as the Darkseer. And then Team Secret, they've Reserve banned out the Knicks time. and Batrider. For Empire, however, their first pick was Treant Protector. And Team Secret, they then go on to pick up Enigma and Crystal Maiden pretty much back to back. It wasn't like any thought in between the two picks. It was just Enigma, Crystal Maiden. They knew what they wanted. They knew what they wanted to go with. And uh, that was two ways to say one thing. So Enigma, Crystal Maiden, you take a look at this lineup right now. Obviously, you've got yourselves a position five Crystal Maiden for Team Secret, which is always good with that extra mana regen. And then you've got yourself an Enigma. Now, Enigma is one of those heroes that obviously can go in uh two different places he could either jungle or we have seen him in the past offlane uh it really depends on team oh, secret and Lord. how they want to play this and really look upon team what Secrets draft team empire is going to go with and right away they've got their two supports they've got their tree and protector they've got their warlock and you know warlock and tree and protector they're not like you know they're not the Dia support team. duo like a crystal maiden and an Earthshaker, in which I just saw, where you've got yourselves uh, the Frostbite, as well as, you know, the Fissure. You've got those stuns, and someone like a Lifestealer can kind of move in on that. Warlock Ten and Tree and Protector, remain. it's, you know, kind of a different play style than a, a support duo, like I just remain. mentioned, where obviously Tree has that Nature's Guise, and he's going to be going invisible and staying in lane, and maybe time. they're looking for pickoffs. Um... <sighs> where you know you get that bash and warlock Team maybe Secrets uses shadow word and maybe get the gets the fatal bonds on the opponent in the offlane which could be the enigma right now so i i'm not you know i'm not huge on these two supports together i do like having like a crystal maiden with Ten one of these supports remaining. where you have that frostbite where you have that 
that root or that or that stun Five available to remaining. you. Obviously, Tree and Protector has that bash, but that's not really that long duration. Uh, this is more about team Reserve fight with time. these two supports of Tree and Protector and Warlock, where you've got Overgrowth, you've got Chaotic wow. Offering, and that's really what you're going to be fighting around team as of right now in this draft, obviously, if you're Team Empire. So they ban out the Rubik, um, and then Team Secret, they ban out the Terrorblade, as well as the Magnus. So not picking up the Magnus maybe hints at the fact that this Enigma Ten might be in the offlane. Um, but Five I will have remaining. more of a grasp on that again when the draft gets a little later and I get a little Reserve smarter. Um, so Tree and Protector, Warlock right now for Empire. They ban out the Rubik. They ban out the Phantom Lancer, which I haven't pick. seen personally in any casting I've done recently, Admiral but I'm Tonka. pretty sure I saw it get picked up a couple of times. Dire team pick. And then uh, we do see Team Secret pick up the Kunkka, which I do think is a four-position Kunkka. Um, so four or five are Kunkka, Crystal Maiden, Enigma. Uh, probably going to go remaining. in that offlane. Four Team Secret. Now, let's see what Team Empire remaining. pick up to kind of go with this Warlock Tree and Protector. They banned out the Darkseer, which you sometimes Reserve see time. with a Warlock. Um, maybe they wanted both the Tree and the Warlock immediately, so they knew they couldn't get the Darkseer, so they banned it out instead. Um, you know, sometimes you see it with the Warlock where you get the Vacuum and the Chaotic Offering hitting at the same time so they didn't end up going that way and with these two heroes right now for team empire i mean obviously a pretty popular pick especially a popular pick for chappie would be a life stealer to come out uh for team empire a lot of opportunity to get kills with the support duo of treant and warlock uh you get that bash you get that leech seed as well as the open wounds uh, you really open up the possibilities of getting a couple of kills for your safe laner. But we'll have to see. 24 seconds of reserve time, so not much left for really Empire to think about it. And axe. they are up against Kunkka, Crystal Maiden, and Enigma, and they end up Team going with secrets. the turn Axe. So Axe is going to be in that off lane for Empire. Uh, I kind of like it here with Warlock and Tree and Protector. Obviously, he could be healed up a little bit. Um, by the tree and protector. If they want to go in, he blinks, gets that call. You know, maybe the Five enemy is not remaining. too low. They get the chaotic offering on there. It's locked down for them, not in the form of a stun, but in Reserve the form of a time. taunt and get that call out. But they still need a mid. They still need a safe laner. And then Team Secret, they need a mid and a safe laner as well. We'll have to see what Secret go. Again, Lifestealer still on the board. It's still pretty popular. Uh, but Secret, they're actually going to go Dia with the pick. Spectre. So they're kind of looking for mobility. They're going to be building that Radiance on Spectre. Obviously, that's a standard build. Uh, you want to be able to stop the blinks of Team Empire. And that's something you can do when you have that Radiance. You use that Haunt and you stop Ten the initiation of an Axe. Or you hit down the Warlock low enough where maybe he doesn't have the opportunity Five to get into position. Remaining to really find that perfect chaotic Life offering. Stealer. Team Secrets turn to ban. Life Stealer is picked up by Team Empire. 10 seconds remaining. 5 seconds remaining. Reserve time. So Life Stealer is picked up by Empire, someone who I thought was going to be picked up uh, immediately uh, in that third pick. So now they've got the Life Stealer, they've got the Axe, they've got that opportunity for Team Empire uh, to, you know, have that mobility have for a Life Stealer to get in there with the Infest, blink, pop the Infest, and with, with that out, uh, they ban the Ember Spirit on Team Secret, but maybe we see something from uh, uh, from Empire like a Ten Storm Spirit come out. Remaining. Five seconds remaining. So Team Secret, Enigma, Reserve Crystal Maiden, Kunkka, Spectre, 
still need that mid for themselves. Maybe we see something uh, that can kind of hit from afar. Maybe like a, a TA. Obviously, that doesn't count in the early goings of a TA, but Storm Spirit has been banned out by Empire, something I thought maybe they would pick for themselves mid. And they do have the first pick for this fifth pick of both teams, so they, they end up banding it out, so maybe they want to go with something else on Team Empire and uh, Team Secret. Remaining. They'll have to pick their mid afterwards. Reserve time. Ten. Outworld Devourer. Team Secrets turn to pick. So they do do go with the OD. Ten seconds remaining. Five seconds remaining. So now, Team Secret, they're going to be up against Reserve this OD, and you need to think about what really works well against him. Um, you know, sometimes you see something like Alina picked into an OD, where if he astrals himself, you can kind of line up that, um, that stun. But, I don't know, I'm, me, personally, I don't know if I like Alina up against this OD. Find out. Sniper. They do end up going with, and they are going to go with the sniper. So OD Life Stealer Axe Warlock Trium Protector for Team Empire, Team Secret. They go with Sniper Specter Kunko Crystal Maiden and Enigma. So it's going to be Maposhka on the Triant King R and the Warlock Ghostic on the Axe Chappy on the on his pretty much signature life stealer, and then FN on the OD, four team secret, mid one on the sniper, MP on the Spectre, Yapsor on the Kunkka, Puppy, Crystal Maiden, and Kezu is going to be playing that Enigma. So if you're just joining me, yes, my mic was screwed up on OBS, talking in-game. That's on me. And uh, I didn't forget the overlay. So there's something positive to take of this. And uh, it looks like we're all good here, ready to go. You guys are just experiencing the delay. This is not a Ricky cast. This is not a drill. Awesome. This is... I have not experienced this yet. All right, that was something. All right, so we take a look. Obviously, we've already introduced the heroes. They've kind of changed that spectator uh, load in a little bit since the last update. And we're going to take a look down low. Is MP kind of taking some hard hits from Maposhka. Maybe he doesn't want to trade with this tree and protector. He's going to have to run away already at half health, expending a tango. And he continues to get hit with that orb of venom. Maposhka is going to chase him. <laughs> MP kind of has to abandon ship. And they are going to ping out MP now that he's got the nature's guys. They've got that split second stun. Just trying to break out the trees, but if they could get a nice stun and a call, this could immediately be first blood and some trouble for Secret. Uh, just gotta watch out. Don't think he is gonna use call, though. It's not the first thing that you would take as an axe. But we take a look over. Maposhka comes down. Maybe he spots out Puppy. So for right now, it looks as though it's gonna be MP and Puppy down in the safe lane. Maposhka going to be roaming around as this tree and does get that one hit bash out on MP, continuing to harass him now again back down below half health. And with Ghost Stick and Maposhka just hanging out in this off lane up against Crystal Maiden Inspector and possibly Yapsor on the Kunkka. Uh, I do kind of like this lane for Empire if they can harass out Spectre enough, but again, there is some possibility for kills here for Secret. If they get X marks the spot, they get the Frostbite or even just the Frostbite and the Torin there with MP hitting away. And that's exactly what they're going to do. They're going to get the Frostbite as well as the Torin. They're going to continue to hit away. There's the Battle Hunger out on MP. Maposhka is going to continue to run forward, but he's got that Shadow Word from King R. MP is going to continue to get run down by Ghost Stick. The Battle Hunger is going to be enough. One more tick. No, not enough as he survives with three health and already with the horn just sounding mp is gonna have to go all the way back to base it's the combination of king r ghostic and maposhka who uh 
push back this Spectre already back to the Shrine, so... Again, we saw a little bit of what Secret have in the opportunity to get themselves a kill in the Frost fight, as well as the uh, Torrent. Obviously, it didn't work out there. His MP was already too low, and he was getting chunked away by both the Battle Hunger as well as just Moposhka's hard hitting. And uh, Empire send back this Spectre, get a free wave on Ghostic. And uh, now we're just going to see again Moposhka just harass out these heroes of Secret. We take a look at the other lanes. We'll take a look over mid as it's the OD FN up against mid one on the Sniper. And, uh, you know, mid one does have the ability to kind of just sit back. Not going to get harassed out by these Astral Imprisonment damages, splash damage. And then we take a look over bottom as the Shadow Words Radiant out on Moposhka. Yeah, Yapsor is going to gonna have to run top. back. Spectro Dagger does come through from MP. Take a look over on top, Chappy. It's gonna be up against Tezu. For my volume just a touch. We take a look at this lane. It does look as though Tezu should have a pretty good time farming as uh you actually see. Chappy at 9 no, so he's top of the last hit and denies his for the time being. Kezu, if he gets the right moment, could go in on Chappy, but it's the other way around. As Chappy gets those open wounds out on Kezu, he's going to continue to move on through. And this Enigma, going to have to use those tangos. Use that tango heal up and kind of stay away from Chappy. We'll have to see if maybe Kezu does change over towards the jungle and farm up there instead. Take a look down bottom once more. MP, no mana for Spectral Dagger, just about to hit level 3. Let me take a look at Ghostic, who's top of the CS chart, 13 and 4 already. And that free wave of, has to send MP back. It was really quite advantageous. Battle Hunger out on Yasuri's. Still just level 1 as Ghostic does cut this, this creep wave. They've got Maposhka pretty deep. I think they're trying to pull MP and possibly Absor out towards Ghostic. Get Maposhka there with King R. And they are going to get the Shadow Word and harass MP out even more. The Shadow Word will bring him down to about half health. He's got the regen. He's got the Arcane Aura. So he's kind of staying all right. But they need to be worried. If he does start to head back, if Maposhka is going to be there or not. That's really the trap they're trying to lay down in front of Secret. And Secret, they're kind of onto this. That's why they're just sitting in these trees down low. On, uh, behind this tower. tower is under attack. And Ghostic, he's actually going to go all the way through. The torrent's going to come in. It's going to hit on King R. He might be in a little bit of trouble as the Spectral Dagger hits on him as well. But he's going to make the TP over. He's going to be under tower now. He has not used that Frostbite just yet. They're actually looking for Ghostic. They don't continue to roll on King R. He's going to use that Shadow Word. And now he's got the Fatal Bonds out on Yapsar and Puppy. There is the Frostbite as well as X marks the spot. They're going to try and set it up with the torrent. But the call, call comes out on two. He's going to get him swung. One in Puppy. Looking for another one in Yapsor. And it's two kills going the way of Empire as Ghost it gets one on Puppy, and Maposhka gets the other one on the Kunkka Yapsor. So it's two for nil, and MP does stay alive for the moment being. But now he's lost both his supports, and he really does have to sit in the trees. Radiant's bottom tower is under attack. So two nothing for Empire already. Take a look over towards mid FN here with mid one and the trap is going to start to rain down on the FN. You just want to continue to harass him out and you do know you have that distance between the two. Coming over is the Warlock. Trying to heal up and, and meanwhile here comes X-Mark to spot as well as the Trapnum. They're going to get the hit with well as the Torrent. They're going to have the Fatal Bonds out on three. We might be in a little bit of trouble for Secret but they do end up taking out FN. Meanwhile MP is going to fall bottom so it's a kill for Secret. Kill for Empire. 
Right now, Empire, they do have themselves about a 1,700 net worth advantage. We take a look over at Chappie. He's now hit with that turret. They're going to use the black hole as well just to secure this kill on Chappie. Wow, that is quite a bit committed just to get a life stealer, but they want to slow down the farm of Chappie, get themselves back in it, and they do use the black hole to get it. The Chappy back up. He'll TP in Kezu now without any more mana. We'll have to back off. Killed. The Eidolons can only do so much. And Chappy, not level 6 just yet. Kind of has to be careful even more. He doesn't want to go down again, but knowing that Black Hole's not up for 3 minutes. Take a look a, a bit at the item progression that's going on for both sides. Ghost Dick, he's going to have himself that Blink Dagger soon. He's, he's already at 1,400 gold MP. Very far behind, just has those brown boots. And we take a look over mid at mid one. He's got himself boots as well, looking for those raindrops. And we do see these two. One watching mid one, one watching over down way on the side. Dyer's middle tower is under attack. So Empire, they're going to continue to harass out this bottom tier one. They actually get the Battle Hunger out on MP here with King Art. Ghostic Empire can really just put our nice harassing out on to MP. Really needs to be careful if he wants any hope of really coming back, getting that Radiance, and possibly turning it around for himself later on in this game. Go look over top. Chappie already has himself Radiance those phase boots. He's gonna go attack. for the Midas. Sometimes you just see phase boots into an armlet. Echo Saber. Radiance Not here. You're gonna see the Midas attack. come out. We're Wife Stealer, and they've got this early advantage, and they want to kind of take that late. So just 425 gold away is Ghost Dick from this blink. And once he gets that blink, the lockdown and the initiation for Empire is going to be there just about nine minutes in. Secret they need to be worried as Ghost Dick is just having such a great time in the early going to this game as he's going to run down MP, get that taunt with the call and gets the slam and gets the kill. But now he's got to run away from the rest of Secret. Trying to be kept alive. There's the assassination as well as the heal from Tree and Protector, but it's not going to be enough as assassination flies through and gets the kill. Mid one. Return kill on Ghost. Stop him from getting that flank for a little bit longer, which is nice for Secret, but even there, he didn't even need it. Runs down MP, gets the kill, and despite losing his life, well worth it to shut down that Spectre even longer. Black Hole up for Kezu in just about 15 seconds. He's going for a Hand of Midas as well. Hand of Midas gaming, which is always always a thrill. And Hand of Midas here for FN. Yapsor just trying to get himself some levels. Eat some heavy damage from FN. Just one shot, but knows he has to move back immediately. Radiance Middle Tower is under attack. Let's take a look at Midwin's farm. He's also going for the Midas. Again, just Midas gaming. And here's the Fatal Bonds. That'll help go stick out to finish off this ancient stack. Get himself towards that blink. Rooted up. Getting actually pretty low. Shadow Word is keeping him alive for a little bit. No shrine for him right now. But he's just going to bring it to the high ground. Get those counter helixes up. Clear out this ancient stack. And there it is. There's Blink. Easy as one, two. Again, we take a look up top at Kezu Dyer's on this Enigma. And he's going to be looking at you know, get himself that black hole. I'm pretty sure he's got Midas ready on the courier. And it's coming over with the hand of Midas for mid one, as well as the hand of Midas out for FN. And Midas is going to be coming out for Kezu. Gold City. Kezu actually has to watch out as Maposhka is here. Let's scout it out and got his Midas. Maposhka has the knowledge and knows the whereabouts. 
So with this information coming over, is going to be Ghostic as well as King R. They're going to use the haunt, so they do spot out this smoke immediately. That's going to be used to go over mid, as it is going to be mid one getting the kill on F. Man, but here comes Blink Call on two. He's going to get the dunk out on mid one. They're going to continue to move on forward. There's the X marker spot, as well as the torch. Stop Ghostic in his steps. And Chappie and Ghostic will be stopped from diving deep on MP and possibly getting themselves a third kill on this Spectre. So it's a one for one trade in terms of mids. I guess it benefits Secret more because Dyer's Spectre was involved. Is under attack. Which is always nice. Take a look over in the Poshka who does spot Kezu. Chappie coming around the bend. They're going to look to get him. There's the rage as well as the open wounds. Kezu, and he doesn't want to use that black hole and he knows he can't use it with nobody really following it up. So Chappie, Miposhka, they run down Kezu on the Enigma, and it's 6 to 4 in favor of Empire. But meanwhile, these Eidolons do take themselves a tier 1 tower top, so a pretty nice trade. Oh boy. Let's take a look. MP. Struggling just a touch. He has been left alone a, a little bit to kind of bring himself back, and he starts heading over towards getting that Radiance now that he's got Dyer's bottom tower is under attack. Dyer's bottom tower is under attack. Now it's different than any other time, but, you know. And fix some things. So three man smoke comes out for Empire. Oh, FN King R as well as Ghostic. They've got that blink initiation with a call ready attack. to go. King R, he does have that chaotic offering, so if they find a couple, they might want to go in on this and really throw everything Dyer's they've got. Mid attack. one, he's kind of just sitting towards Radiant's the mid lane right now with the Absor. They attack. don't find anything with this smoke just yet, and they do have the haste out on FN. So they could make a move. They are gonna find themselves a crystal made and they hit away both FN and Ghostic. And he will get that final dunk steel. with the Culling Blade. And then gets yet another kill. Now 5-1 and one for this axe. So 7-4 to four in favor of Empire. And despite all that, they're only up 1,000 gold. It, it really looks like they're just controlling the map, controlling really the tempo of this game. But still, Secret, they've kept themselves pretty close in terms of net worth. Top two net worth are mid one and then Kezu, but there's the blink with the call. They've got some battle hunger out on Kezu as well. The black hole comes out on two, but there's the counter helix to get the kill, the haunt to get away. And let's see where MP has ended up. Meanwhile, Ghostic's going to be killed off. There's the freezing two, but it's going to be stopped by the chaotic offering. Puppy's going to try and run away. He's hit with that big, uh, fatal bonds, and then Ghost Ship's going to come on through onto King R. Meanwhile, FN's going to get the kill on MP. Chappie's going to come around, try and get himself a kill on the TPing out. Mid one will be able to escape as well as the crystal meeting gets out here too, so Puppy survives with just a little bit of health. Radiant's top tower is under attack. A little bit of gold going the way of Empire. They've now granted themselves a 2,500 net worth advantage. While this top tier one is trying to be taken out by this nice golem of the warlock. Puppy just trying to defend. They will pull that golem off. They don't want to give up free gold if they don't need to. Take a look over. Let's go around the horn and see what the item progression is thus far as we see the four staff coming out for FN going to be trying to finish off that hurricane pike meanwhile up top they do deny that tower is Kezu denying it we take a look over at Ghostic he's got himself that blank looking for the blade mail over on Chappie he's got himself base boots in the armor now going for the desolator and might find himself an echo saver next and for Treant Tranquils and literally just observer wards queued up 
for quite some time as the Warlock, he's going for the Hand of Midas. On the other side, Team Secret still looking for that Radiance on Spectre. Has the Urn, has the Phase Boots, mid one. Top of the net worth, he's looking for a Maelstrom of his own as he's got a Midas of his own. And then we take a look over at Kezu. Uh, now it does have the Mech as well as the Arcane Boots. Looking for the Guardian Greaves to possibly finish it off next or go for the Blink beforehand. Usually the case, and then obviously the Sports have their supporty nest items. So Infested Indigo Stick is chappy. They're looking to creep cut here, try and make a move, take this tier one, maybe force the rotation out from Secret, but I think Secret are a little bit wiser than that. As they'll be going over towards mid to try and take a tower of their own, and if they could trade a Radiant tier one, they wouldn't be too upset about that. So quite a bit of gold here. The Haunt coming through, we take a look over it, it's MP. Almost Puppy getting themselves a kill on King R. We're a little late to that one. We don't actually see King R fall, and then uh, over mid, mid one's gonna fall, and we're missing kills left and right. All Vampire disconnect except for FN. King R goes down to the freezing field as well as the haunt, so two ults used there. We take a look over mid. It was probably just a blink call. I've been changing my settings. Have you been hearing the slack pings that I've been getting? There's a lot of people saying, your mic's too low, your mic's too low, please, for the love of God, your mic's too low. Something along the lines. Fix that for you guys. Let's pause, let's take a look. Again, net worth is Sniper just in front of FN for now. Did just fall, that gives up opportunity for FN to really take that first net worth lead for the first time, I think, this game. I have a lot of messages here telling me oh, I might really apologize about that. That all around. You can ever forgive me, Twitch chat viewers. Please. Thank you. I appreciate it. Can someone tell B-Cop his mic is low? Hey, not sure you'll see this, but your mic is low. Turn up your mic, please. Turn up your volume, please. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Alright, let's continue the game. Here we go. FN's gonna be looking over mid. There's the torn as well as the Frostbite, but he's getting the blink call. The ghost ship is gonna try and save his life. There's the Sandy's Eclipse. He's not gonna get anybody just yet. Ghost is gonna get very low. He's gonna be slowed down, but he's got himself that blade now. Now MP's gonna try and come in, finish him off. Of course, that forward's gonna keep Ghost alive. And now he's gonna be rooted up. Mapush is gonna try and run away as well. He's gonna be hit by that sentry as well as the X marks the spot. But still, nothing happening. Nobody dying, but now again, there's the Torrent as well as the Frostbite next marks the spot. They'll get themselves the kill on Mikoshka, thanks to the TP of Puppy. Close the distance and get themselves a kill on Seek. Radiance Middle Tower is under attack. So the Shrine is used, the people heal on both ends. Let's see a little fight recap on that one. 455 gold going the way of Secret. Got the middle tower is under attack. Kezu finished him off. He's looking pretty good. Is he going to go for the Guardian Greaves in full? Yes, he is. So 10-7. to 7, Favor Vampire. If you had them in the first of 10 kills, congratulations. You just won. I won a little while ago when mid one went down, but I wasn't paying attention. So, while all this is happening, MP was a little bit involved. Still going for this Radiance. The ever-poor Spectre at 4,200 net worth. He is 3,000 gold behind this axe. That is just a sad, despicable start for a Spectre. 
Meanwhile, Mapochka is getting the side of Empire knowledge on where MP is. He doesn't see the rest of the team just yet of Yapsor, Kezu, as well as Puppy. There is a ward back here that should spot out Puppy if it doesn't run out in time, and there it is, it will spot him out. This will come in handy. Dyer's bottom tower is under Mapochka attack. Mapochka still moving forward, MP. Going a little far forward, and when you've got a tree and protector who's invis and you have no idea where he is, maybe you don't want to be that far Dyer's forward without your team. Of course, he's, he's got Absor maybe to throw that boat, but, I mean, just a Kunkka and a Spectre, maybe not putting yourself in the best of positions. Wherever that king are. Buddy. So FN over towards mid is Kezu, mid one, and Puppy are here. Kezu goes up black hole again. No blink dagger just yet. He's actually going to be going for the Solar Crest first. So not going for the blink dagger. And smoking up is Puppy, mid one, and Kezu. They're going to look to be heading towards the... They're going to go for this first Roche of the game, make a pretty aggressive decision to do so, down by 4,000 net worth. Let's see if Empire kind of gets the hint if they realize that a couple of these heroes are off the map, maybe they're in Roche. But for now, it doesn't look as though they're making the rotation over. Kezu is going to really be tanking this and working hard towards getting this Roche. Probably the Aegis is going to be going out on mid one as he's got this open spot. He's looking for a blink dagger of his own. He's got the Maelstrom, the Eidolon just hitting away at Roche. Kezu here and... There it is, there's Roche, and there's the Aegis on mid one. Secret, take it under the noses of Empire. So Secret, they're not trying to fight really too much. They're trying to farm, trying to get themselves those next couple of items and really just extend the game for MP. MP who now has himself about 6,000 net worth trying still to get this sacred relic and finish off that radiance but again he is very far from it and really Empire they can continue to shut down the Spectre they should really pull up on this advantage that they have at this point in time they've got themselves Chappie's got himself the Desolator as well as has that armlet now it looks as though he's going to be going for that nice AC and then we take a look over at King R again he's got that Midas He's working well. Oh, the Poshka, he continues to keep himself near MP at all times. He wants to know where this Spectre is going to be, and they want to shut him down. They want to continue to make it harder for him to get that Radiance and really work towards anything. And the Poshka tries to cut the trees, but he's going to get uninvisible or become visible. And now he goes invisible, gets the stun, stops the TP. There's the blink and the call, but the haunt's going to keep him alive for a little bit longer as he jumps over to FN. So he's going to use that haunt to be a little slippy specter. And FN not going to be able to get the kill on MP, but M MP he does find himself a little bit of an escape. And that's very crucial for Secret because they can't have him continually dying and not grabbing this radius. Dyer's bottom tower is under attack. At some point, it kind of seems a little bit that Secret's kind of playing this four protect one ish way to keep MP alive and get himself that radiant. I almost said radiant. With radiance. To go look over at mid one, he's still keeping pace with FN on the OD. He's got himself that age of still. Now the Blink Dagger and the Maelstrom. So we'll see if he finishes off the Mjolnir next. And now a medallion comes out on King R. So they've got two medallions here. Four Empire. Are going to infest into Ghostic. And it looks as though Empire, despite not having themselves the Aegis, are going to be look, looking to be the ones on the aggressive side as these Eidolons are going to catch out Ghostic. They're going to spot the whole plan, and it is for some fun. Works out. Radiance Middle Tower has been denied. So Mopochka actually going to be dusted up. They're going to spot him, get the X mark spot as well as the Shrapnel down the trying to get that torn to land on him. Here too, the overgrowth comes on through. Mopochka gonna hit by that assassinate, but 
Ghost Nap Sword. He's already got himself a kill. Meanwhile, he's going to be hit by that blink call. Ghost Stick as well as Chappy. They'll get themselves the return. So it's a one for one on position fours. Radiance and everybody goes back to their side. So 11 to 8 in favor of Empire. They hold themselves a 3,600 net worth lead. And again, still Spectre very uh, underwhelming in terms of net worth and really anything. 03 and 5. The farm not too great. Still looking to finish off that race. Just 24 minutes and he really just can't find the farm to finish it off. He's continually getting harassed out. Maposhka keeping eyes on him. They force him to back off. It's just been such a tough time for MP and the Spectre. Really just trying to, to find the farm and really find something out of all this. Radiant's bottom tower is under attack. Take a look over mid. The maps or the rest of Secret. They're here with Kezu. They go high ground, they're gonna be looking into the faces of Empire, and there's the Eidolons doing the scouting, and Ghost Dick just gonna hit away and clean him up, but now Xmark Spot comes out as well as the blade now, pop by Ghost Dick, get hit by that torrent, and now here comes the foe, he's gonna get very low, he's gonna be cleaned up immediately, here comes the Chaotic Offering, that's gonna stop MP, he's gonna use himself that haunt, the Black Hole is gonna come on through, on the Chappie, they're gonna bring him about half health, and now the Sanity's Eclipse is gonna follow it up. They're gonna kill off Poppy, they're gonna kill off Kezu, and they're gonna continue to roll inside of Empire. There's the blink on forward, but mid one, he's off on the cliff. He's gonna continue to hit away at Chappy. Chappy's getting very low. He's gonna get very low. He's gonna arm one tug himself up to safety and get out with the four step of FN. Meanwhile, Maposhka staying nearby. He'll be killed off by mid one, and it's a two for two trade. An axe and a treant for an enigma and a crystal maiden. Dyer's middle tower is under attack. So it's a two for two trade. You take out Kezu, he uses that black hole, doesn't really do too much as it gets stopped by the chaotic offering of King R. And that's really the problem with having yourselves in Enigma fighting into a warlock who's ready with that ult. He drops the black hole and then all of a sudden right off of it, there's the chaotic offering if you don't catch yourselves a warlock and it's stopped and then the fight goes the way of Empire. Now obviously they had a two for two split, but Chappie was low, FN was low, and they got themselves out and got themselves two kills. So we take a look over. Spectre. Has the time come? Is it finally here? 26 minutes into the game. Has the gold. Radiance just yet. Keeping an eye. Radiant Watch 2017. Happy still trying to finish off this AC. He sits a little bit behind mid one on the sniper. And there it is. Radiance Watch 2017 has come to an end. MP, 26 and a half minutes into the game. He has found himself a Radiance. The gods are with him. Let's see. Now that this Radiance is picked up for Empire, is this going to change the game? Does the Radiance burn? Does the Mischance? Does the Haunt with this Radiance really change it up for Empire now? He has the ability to stop that Blink Dagger of Ghost Stick. Maybe he doesn't come in with the calls, but let's see. Let's see how it goes for Secret now that the Radiance has finally been picked off. Or picked up. So there it is. Kazu is going to spot Maposhka, and MP comes on through. Just like that, they find a kill. Kazu. We get credit credit for the kill. He's three three and three. And Poshka not really a high priority target. They don't use much for it. They do end up using that haunt from MP. I think MP was really trying to get the kill. Needs to really catch up on that farm. Dyer's top top is meanwhile, Chappie. Top. I'm pretty sure he's finished off this uh, AC. Here it comes all the way down. And then we take a look. BKB's finished for him, as well as the Hurricane Pike and the Blink Dagger here. 
Having a very nice time at top of the net worth. And we compare that to the top of the net worth on Secret Mid One, who's got the Mjolnir, Blink, and Midas. Looking for the Yasha next. We'll see if that. The Amanta style picked up for this sniper. Well, there's the scan coming out from Empire. They do know that a couple of them are here. It's going to be MP. MP's in a little bit of trouble. There's the Blink as well as the Infest as well as the Blade Mail pop by Ghostic. They're going to get themselves an immediate kill. They're looking for more in Yaps or they've got themselves the open wounds, but they're not going to chase. That was a quick kill on MP. And I'm sorry to say, the Radiance changed nothing. Marks the spot comes out on Ghost Dick. He'll be pulled on back, get hit by that torrent. No follow-up from Secret. They don't have MP for another 16 seconds. In that time, they will have Haunt off cooldown, but going for Roche is going to be Empire, and there's really nothing stopping them in terms of Secret coming over. Four secret. We take a look over at Kezzy. He's got himself that solar press. No Guardian Greaves finished just yet. Going for him next. Dyer's bottom tower is under attack. Dyer's see how quickly because you can get that and how much of a difference it's going to make. Gover, Manta style, trying to get finished for MP. Dyer's bottom tower is under attack. It's far away. Meanwhile, over in the jungle, a fight comes through. There's the boat. They're going to finish off King R as the haunt comes in from MP. BKB's popped by Ghost. We were there a little bit late. Now here comes X marks the spot for the BKB used by FN. Going to be forced out. We'll just back off after losing that Warlock. Do I have a second? Nope. That's hurting my ears. So Bloodstone finished here for Enigma. We take a look over at Mposhka. Again, has eyes on MP. As he's nearby, breaks those trees, and they'll spot him. Here's mid one. There's another kill. The overgrowth is going to be on three. But again, Kezu knows exactly where he is. Gets himself the kill. So 14 to 13, despite the kills being close, still 7,000 net worth lead for Empire. Absor is going to be looking for that blink dagger, and you know when things are all said and done, there's still a fully healed up, t or not healed up, but full health tier two tower top, full health tier two tower mid. Empire objectively hasn't been making the most progression. You know they have this seven thousand net worth lead, but still need to find themselves, you know, the the objectives, the 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 finish, the high ground finish. And with the, that time really continuing to pass, letting MP find himself the Manta style mid one farming up, he's going to be hard to really get the high ground on. I wonder if even with this lead, Empire know that they're going to struggle going for objectives. Dyer's top tower is under attack. I think Secret kind of feel that out. They know that Empire aren't really pushing the issue in objectives. They'll continue to farm, try and find as much as they can until the time happens. They'll let those tier two towers fall and try to hold the high ground and eventually turn this 8,000 net worth deficit around. Take a look up top. 4,700 gold saved up. They're coming through. Wait, Evan. Drop that pretty boy 
redstone. And they're going to continue to push, but again, not really taking objectives. They'll push, they'll farm, they'll up their advantage now to 10,000 net worth, but all is said and done. This is the ghost of the game getting extended more and more for secret, and Radiance top tower is under attack. Overall, I think that's a win. This or MP in the rest of Secret. If they want to get Radiance these next items, we'll really be ready to hold. So there it is. There's the Tier 2 Tower Top Gun. That's wrong. And uh, Ghostic going to continue to push. He's looking for a Shadow Blade next. He's got that BKB. Let me take a look at the timers. BKB down to 9 seconds. And here, 9 seconds as well. Take a look over at chat. He's going to be looking for that MKB. He's got himself the AC, the Desolator, as well as the Armor. Farming pretty well, still behind mid one. As again, they are ultimately getting ready for the high ground push. Stick finished off for FN. He's got himself the haste. See if Empire work with this. Ghost Stick coming over. Chappie kind of far back, so not too sure they want to fight without him, and they'd probably want him infested in Ghost Stick. Passive for the last, I'd say, three or four minutes. Pulling the wind out of my excitement sail. They will just continue to farm, and again, as I've just been reiterating time and time again in the last three to four minutes, is Secret's okay with this. They're okay with trying to get themselves the farm they need to find themselves back in the game, especially MP, whose net worth at 12,500 is still behind Ghostic on this axe. That is an off-lane axe that has more net worth than a safe-lane Spectre who's just that had a really poor time and only four deaths, but they were very crucial and it was a 26-minute Radiance. So he has struggled quite a bit, and now the MKB here to nullify that mischance, and there's the Infest out on Ghostic, and... Those shadow blade coming out. This is where they want to make their move. Dyer's top tower is under attack. It is times like this where I really do wish I kind of. Had a co-caster with me, but that's on me. Should I have one before I started this? And FN just gonna clean up top. He's got himself that sheep stick. He's gonna be looking for the Shiva's guard next. Then let's see if Secret maybe feel comfortable enough, and maybe they'll wait for the BKB on Kezu to really start to be the aggressors in this game. Down still 10,000 net worth. An empire they've really sat back quite a bit and they're gonna be waiting for the Roche which may respawn in 24 seconds Look up top up MP he's got himself that Manta style so Manta Radiance arms kind of pulling back just behind the axe now for the first time in this game let me take a look at King R. He's got himself that Solar Crest, and actually, Poshka does it. Down the courier? No. Hasn't had the gold for it. Pretty sure he's just been buying wards the whole time. And we'll look over towards Roche, which will respawn in just under three minutes. So it looks as though Empire, they're going to take their time to farm and really just wait for Roche to be back up. And that's where they're really going to make their move. They're going to go for this Aegis and possibly Secret. They're going to look to fight because they know that the Roche Pit's a nice choke point for a nice black hole. And that's exactly where they like to fight if it all came down to it. So they'll sit back, they'll wait, they'll hope to get us. Uh, 
with knowledge that Roche is up, and maybe they send the Eidolons over there. And there it is. Check for Roche. They see it. it's not up. Still up in two minutes, and both teams will just continue to be passive until that time comes. They're going to try and get Spectre that heart beforehand, and... Let's see how well MP can really farm. We take a look over at mid one. He's going for an MKB of his own. And let's take a look over at Kezu, who just about finished with that BKB and he might have it in time for this Roche fight and would really love to have it before Roche comes up. Take a look over at the other side, Empire. And looking for the Abyssal Blade out on Chappy FN. He's got himself now the Sheep's Guard Sheepstick. BKB and Hurricane Pike, very farm, top of the net worth, and with that, Empire, they are gonna smoke up his five. Radiance Middle Tower is under attack. For virus. Jungle area towards top smoke's gonna break. There's the hex as well as the blink to call the haunt. He's coming through, but I'm not too sure they want to continue on forward and backing off is going to be secret as they lose just one in Yaps. So they get the easy kill. He's dead for 37 seconds, and that'll be when Roche comes back up. They'll check again. They're not going to find it. Hopefully they leave something closer. Really just leave the Poshka here for another minute or so. But they're not going to. And Empire, they might want to keep the aggression on. They know there's no buyback. Or really, he wasn't forced to use it. They know that Kunkka is not going to be up for another 15 seconds. And why not try to get this Tier 2 from Secret? We'll take the Tier 2. They'll eat the Assassination and Roche. Up and ready to go. The Eidolons of Secret do spot it. So let's see if Secret are going to come through. They don't have Haunt for another 58 seconds. They're not going to be stopped by the stun and Empire. They're going to continue to go for this Roche. It looks as though they're going to be trying to come in on Secret. There it is. Frostbite coming in on the OG. He's going to have to imprison himself with the X marks the spot coming on through. And the boat's not going to hit as he's after to imprison still. As he's sitting on the side. They've got the trap raining down onto the Roche pit. With the assassination out on King R. Meanwhile, Shappy, oh god. Just farming up the aging creeps. They get the kill on Kezu, which I, I, somehow I completely missed. Jesus, that was horrible camera work. So they still look to continue to work. The X marks the spots back out onto. Ghost stick, he'll be pulled back and let's see now infested again is Ghost stick. He's gonna be invisible. Puppy on the side with mid one and an MP. Kezu back up. And it's still just a fight by this Roche pit. Empire's got Moposhka just sitting nearby, so it, even if Secret try to go in, they'll have themselves the overgrowth as well as that one hit Dyer's stun out of the visibility. Courier dead. Dunks. Ghost Stick says good night, good fight. So both teams kind of sitting really close to this Roach pin. They both want this Aegis. It could mean the end of the game for a secret. It could mean new life for a secret. It's really what hangs in the balance in this next fight. Again, infested up is Ghost Stick, still trying to make something happen. There's the Spectral Dagger down on the low ground. And Pete's trying to get in. They get themselves a little bit of vision. The assassination will come out on King R. This will come in handy. Radiance Middle Tower is under Super, attack. They actually back off of this Roche pit. So Empire, they're still sitting steady by the Roche Pit, not going in just yet. They don't really have full eyes yet on Secret, so they don't know to go in or not just yet. But they're moving up top, and they're moving towards Secret ever more. Well. 
Still in Viz's ghost stick. Ooh, actually comes by, by that sentry ward. Two very close to each other, and that was almost a bad spot for the axe and the life stealer. There's the ward. There it is. Picked off. Nice 100 gold for FN. That's exciting, isn't it? And there it is. There they are heading towards Roche. Happy taking it very quick with this nice lower crest out on Roche. The secret, they conceded Roche to Chappie and Empire. So it's Aegis and Cheese on the third Roche of the game. And that's Aegis for Chappie, again, with Empire. They're up now 15,500 net worth. Secret, they know the time is now that they need to be defending their high ground because coming through mid is going to be Empire. So Chappie shows himself. There's the Frostbite as well as the Torrent. He's gonna have to be forced that back as well as use that Rage already down to half health. Meanwhile, pushing bottom is gonna be MP. He's got himself that nice Reaver. Dyer's bottom tower. Is so the net attack. worth lead continues to extend. MP trying to do as much as he can. And pushing that bottom creep wave, trying to get himself and his team his first tier two tower. And with that, Empire have kind of backed off and again Maposhka just wards. And again, we take a look at Empire as now they're trying to get this butterfly out on OD. We take a look over at Chappie, still looking for the Abyssal Blade. Ghost stick, he's got himself pretty much everything that he wants. Too sure they didn't see that. Ghost stick trying to take the long way around. Puppy's nearby. The shadow blade used coming over is Maposhka trying to make a move. There's the sentry ward. I'm not. Does it spot him? It does have him in vision. There's the blink forward with the overgrowth out onto. They're trying to get something with the blink call. That's going to come out onto as well. But the raining down is going to come through on Maposhka. He's going to be the first one to die. Because he's going to drop to Chappie. And now MP might be in a little bit of trouble as he's hit by those open wounds. But he uses that spectral dagger. He'll get out. And it will just be the time being a one for one as FN gets one in puppy. The blink call gonna come through. We take a look. Yaps are in a bit of trouble. He'll fall as I continue to drop the ball on the camera work. So hitting away is mid one as he was forced to buy back an empire. They know it's their time. They're up 20,000 net worth. Chappie continuing to get hit down low and blinking forward is FN. He's going to get that hex. He's going to try and bring down mid one one more time. And he's dead for 95 seconds. And with that, GG is called. And empire will take game one of this best of three over secret. There it is. Not celebratory black hole. Celebratory chaotic offering. And team empire will... Whew. So that was kind of slow game towards the end. Nice in the beginning. Uh, camera work that was kind of bad. I apologize for that. And as well as the mic and sound issues. Going to try and fix it before the next game. Uh, I'm your caster, B Cop, at B Cop 92 on Twitter. Tell me how well my sound is, please. And 